I'm Mike Wesch. I'm a professor at Kansas State University. I think about the great thing <laughs> is a way to center your mind on the great questions that are essential to your discipline. They'd be the questions that humans have been asking for thousands of years and over time we've developed disciplines around those great questions. You know, for example, in medicine, it's essentially uh, what is a healthy body and how do we create a healthy body? We've been thinking about that for thousands of years. In economics, it's how should we organize society and how should we uh, distribute resources? That's something we've been thinking about for thousands of years. Every discipline has some set of questions that are eternal and essential. And when you ground yourself in those questions, you don't know the answers, but you love the questions and any human could love those questions. And it's, I think that's, if you center your class in that, uh, everybody's interested and everybody can feel empowered to participate because we know that the, the answers are not gonna be final. So, I mean, I always start with the great questions rather than the content. Uh, but content, I think, really matters. Um, it's just, if it's motivated by these great questions, you end up finding rich and relevant content that the students are gonna love. And also, you're open to students contributing content as well, because you're just trying to answer these great questions together. And your students are gonna have all kinds of experiences that you haven't had and they'll come to the table with their own content and ideas. So by centering things on the questions, it, it creates like a generative engine to create better content that's always relevant. I'm really trying to get my students to um, embrace diversity, to meet other people, to try to understand them, to empathize with them. And so my assignments are things like go out into the world and meet a stranger and have a deep conversation with them. And that's actually extremely difficult to do. So then what does grading look like? Well, um, really I just want evidence and reflection, evidence that they did the assignment and reflection on what they learned going out into the world. And what do they learn? Well, they learn a lot about themselves, like um, what are their own personal barriers to talking to strangers? We all have them, but all of us probably have different bar bar barriers. So they have to reflect on what those barriers are for them. And then what did they learn from the stranger and how did it strike them? Those are all in part personal. So I can't just like um, grade them on a you know really strict uh, rubric, so to speak. Um, but instead I'm, I'm looking for growth and personal growth and that means I have to like essentially build relationships with each student and try to understand them and their own journey. Uh, it becomes much more personalized in that way. I found that it's actually really useful for me to expose myself to other ideas uh, and to read a lot of ideas that contradict my own and then to, when I hear those same ideas or similar ideas coming up from students, I don't have to push back on them. I can actually kind of welcome them in as part of this great conversation because I know that having that tension between ideas is actually how we'll create energy in the classroom and we'll create uh, a space where we all can feel like we can express our ideas and hopefully move closer and closer to the truth, and I'll put truth in quotes here because I'm using truth in the sense of uh, not as like a definitive answer, but more like a, a great conversation about things that matter. You, you pursue it with a sense of responsibility and, um, and rigor. And so it, it, you don't just flippantly say there is no truth and then, you know, like everybody has their own opinion. It's more like we're participating in this great conversation in which truth really does matter. And let's like talk about all the different pieces here. And I feel like that ultimately is a demonstration of how to think critically. And as we're all, since all the students are invited to do that with me, it actually increases all of our ability to think critically and, and uh, while at the same time, like listening to each other more and, and trying to understand where we're coming from.
I've learned a lot about technology would be one thing. I think the other thing is uh, it forced us all to think about kind of in its essence what teaching is all about. Like when, you, when we lost the classroom, it forced us to think about well, what, what is it we were doing in the classroom? Can that be replicated without a classroom? The reality is I think if you thought deeply about that, you might have realized as I did, even though I was using the classroom to teach, uh, teaching wasn't the goal. Uh, learning is the goal. And once you realize that learning is the goal, uh, that kind of shifts your perspective on technology as well. You don't just use the technology to find a different way of delivering a lecture. You use the technology to think about, okay, how can we leverage what we have to learn as best as possible? <music> Having grown up in a small town in, in uh, America, rural America, uh, we didn't put a high value on education. And in fact, it, it was better if you pretended you didn't like school at all. <laughs> and so I went through all of high school, never doing any homework. I never brought a single book home ever. I never read a book. And I got to college and I took that same attitude with me. And then I met this professor who assigned like a novel for a neuroscience class. So this is neuroscience and he assigned a novel and I thought, well, this is weird. It's like a, and it was uh, Jurassic Park of all things. Like why assign Jurassic Park? Like if it's an, it was like coming out as a movie. I thought this is strange. Like, and so I decided I'd read it. <laughs> and of course I loved it. I hadn't read in like 10 years. And I just suddenly like fell in love with reading. Uh, and from that moment on, he, he just kind of lit me up. And having never been in a library at that point, I went to the library and I was just amazed at all the books that were there. My, my heart started to beat faster. I was like in love with the library. I was in love with books. And it all happened because he was willing to kind of meet students where they were. And more than anything, I would just say that he woke me up. And I think that's, that's now how I approach teaching. Like I know a lot of students are coming in having never been interested in learning actually, or maybe they're interested in learning, but they don't know it. They hate school um, and my job is to, I think my main job actually, <laughs> is to kind of wake them up. Because if I can wake them up, then eventually I can just get out of the way and they're gonna learn everything they need to learn, even without me. So I've just loved this town. Um, everywhere I go, there are people sitting out on the streets and laughing and having fun. Uh, it's just, uh, They've done a really good job with the planning of this town so that there's a lot of opportunities to connect with each other. So you see a lot of like community just blooming out on the streets everywhere. Uh, so I, I just kind of fell in love with Valencia in the last couple of days. And you know now the conference has started and that same energy is here. So yeah, I'm really excited to be here.